Welcome back. Tonight on the Independent Republic of Mike Graham, we can't not celebrate our Scottish friends and gear address Thea Haggis. Scotland's national poet, Rabbi Burns, turns 264 this year, and Burns Night is an opportunity to have a kilt-raising, whisky-filled good time in celebration. Now, who better to old lang syne with than Scottish actor Mr Lewis MacLeod? Or do we say Donald Trump? Great job. This is the soon-to-be president again, the Donald. I want to say a big hi and happy Burns Night to MC Micah G, Micah Graham, who's saving Talk TV. Mike G, he saves Talk TV. I'm great with rhyming. He's a great guy, funny, witty, ribald, intrusive, argumentative, contrary, but a great guy. Burns was a terrible man. The way he treated Homer Simpson was appalling. But we're going to celebrate him tonight. I'm sorry I can't be with you, Mike, but you're a great guy. Congratulations on all your successes. You're doing a great job on that TV show. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Oh, hi, the noodly highly. <laughs> I've got to say, uh, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And uh, Lewis MacLeod, of course, one of the great uh, Scotland's exports there. Um, joining our Burns Night party now, of course, who better uh, than the former First Minister of Scotland, Mr Alex Salmond. Alex, a um, uh, very, very happy Burns Night to you. Welcome to the Independent <laughs> Republic. Um, I couldn't get them to put any, um, uh, any sort of uh, Scottish flags around adorning the place, but I've got a little uh, wee dram here to hey, share Michael, with you. I noticed you weren't drinking very much in that glass. Uh, are well, you sure that's the real stuff you've oh, got Oh, it is, there? absolutely. It is absolutely the real <laughs> stuff, but it's early on in the <laughs> Show, so I don't want to get stuck in too early, but uh, tell us what you're up to on Burns Night. What's the deal? Well, I mean, I'm here in the northeast of Scotland in Stricken. There's 400 people in Stricken Burns Club next door, but I've come to the quiet room so as I can hear you and uh, the uh, inimical Louis, Louis McLeod. Yes, I mean, he's a great man. Are you going to be having an address to the haggis at some point? Ah, fair fall, you're on a sonsy face, Mike. Uh, that's the haggis, not you, of course. Yes, no, but, of course. Uh, yes, of course. That, that's all. No, we've had our haggis, we've had our meats, we've had our tatties. Yeah. We're uh, digesting the whiskey and uh, everybody's having a, a fantastic time. Excellent. Well, I mean, I know you've got a couple of little um, ditties for us later on, but, I mean, it's going to be difficult to avoid talking to you about uh, Nicola Sturgeon um, and how she managed to call uh, Boris Johnson a fucking clown. Yeah, I think that's the highlight of, of, of Nicola's year, actually. <laughs> this is the only, the, only, the only thing in the last year that's come out well for her. That should, uh, that should uh, stay her execution by, <laughs> by, by a few moments, uh, since the, even the ranks of Tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer yes. uh, the description of Boris Johnson. The problem is that uh, the COVID inquiry here has not been good news for the, the Scottish government, not at all. No. Uh, and uh, the relatives, understandably, the people who lost loved ones during the pandemic are, are spitting blood, and understandably so. Yeah, exactly right. And Jason Leach, who was, I suppose, your equivalent of Chris Whitty, has come out of it very badly as well. He was the guy who was the sort of advisor, wasn't he, on a lot of the medical manoeuvrings that went on, including telling people... Don't worry about wearing a mask. As long as you've got a drink in your hand, uh, you'll be able to get around the rules. Yes, I, and I've been following his advice over <laughs> these last few years, Mike. I'm doing really well. Well, now, this the problem is the with thing. Jason Leach is he's caught on WhatsApp saying uh, that he has a bedtime ritual of deleting his WhatsApps. Yeah. That was on a WhatsApp. <laughs> yes. So obviously, his bedtime ritual was not infallible. Right. Uh, another civil servant was caught saying that plausible deniability was his middle name. Right. Uh, so clearly, they, they were all at it, uh, you know, queuing up to delete uh, incriminating evidence. Because basically, the problem is that, you know, they, they were having banter. You know, they, you know, I mean, most people are not full faced about these things. You don't deny people's right to have a joke or two. But, you know, it's very difficult to see the humour in the middle of a pandemic when, you know, tens of thousands of people are dying. And well, so they'll tell jokes. They'll tell jokes about cannabis and and, and the rest of it. Now we're only seeing a, a snippet right. because the vast majority of the WhatsApps and of course all of Nicholas Sturgeon's have been deleted, uh, despite the explicit promises that they'd all be kept. Right. And I, I can't help but think that those who engaged in this mass deletion exercise 
uh, are in pretty hot water. Mind you, having seen Hamza today, who hasn't deleted as many as other people have, I can see perhaps why, why they deleted them. I mean, Hamza managed to insult the, well, virtually every organisation in Scotland. He insulted the police federation. He called them uh, this grace. He insulted other MSPs. I mean, I mean, I thought you were the only person I knew that insults the entire population, but Hamza beat you to it. Well, indeed, and he made a very grovelling apology, didn't he? He sort of more or less said that everything that they did was unforgivable. Um, he couldn't believe that they'd done it. It's almost uh, as though it's a different person speaking because, of course, what people might forget down here in London, in Westminster, is that he was the Secretary... Uh, uh, professionally, the Secretary of State for Health, wasn't he, the Health Minister? So he was involved in an awful lot of what was being done. Well, he was involved... He was the Secretary for Health for the second half of the the COVID the pandemic, after uh, the summer of 2021. Mm. Uh, but even when he was Secretary for Health, you couldn't help the abiding feeling that he wasn't really making any of the decisions. The, the decisions apparently were all being made by Elizabeth Lloyd, who mm. was the senior special advisor to Nicholas Sturgeon. And Liz Lloyd, I mean, she seems quite happy by giving the impression that she was calling the shots and, and running the government after hearing her evidence didn't seem any need for anyone else but her. No. Uh, which might explain why, why things didn't go entirely smoothly. No, quite. I mean, um, and are you curious as to what WhatsApp messages that may have been involving things that were said about you uh, that have suddenly gone missing, that have been suddenly <laughs> well, wiped from noted, the memory? It has been noted in the social media yes. that, uh, strangely enough, all WhatsApps between March and September 2020 have been deleted. Ah. Even Liz Lloyd, who turned up with uh, some WhatsApps after September 2020, couldn't explain why, for some unfathomable reason, the March to September ones weren't appearing. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, there'd be some... I mean, I'd be in the receiving end like the Police Federation and other MSPs, and perhaps even worse. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to think what we should be doing uh, is getting the Chinese or the or the Russians to tell us what's in these WhatsApps. I mean, they, are, they apparently can read everything. So yes. maybe we should be putting a, imploring the Chinese or Russian governments to tell us what's been deleted. Well, or even perhaps go to the tech companies uh, and see if they can actually be retrieved. Because I'll tell you this, and this is what's really worrying. The act of deleting these WhatsApps comes with a great political cost. So that tells you, it tells me at least, that whatever's in these WhatsApps must be pretty bad. Yeah to take the cost of deletion and the, the odium and the infamy of, of this delete uh, policy, to actually have exercised actively the deletion of evidence and take all the criticism that's going to come your way because of that, whatever was in these WhatsApps must be pretty damning. Yes, on the basis that what would have come before the public would have actually made it all worse. We've seen some of that uh, in the inquiry down here in London. Uh, Boris Johnson famously didn't want to, um, you know, lose all the WhatsApps by switching on his phone and so was unable to supply some. And certainly um, Lord Bethel also similarly changed his phone and lost all of his WhatsApps and he was in the, uh, the, the, the Ministry of State for Health as well. You know, it's all, they're, all at, they're all at it. Yes, of course they are. And, and, you know, therefore, having the Tory leader in Scotland seems to forget that uh, the Prime Minister didn't turn over any WhatsApps. Boris Johnson had a <laughs> smattering, as you rightly say, people in the health department. I mean, everybody seems to have had very jittery fingers and dropped their phones and baths at various points over the, over the, last, uh, over the last year or two. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the Westminster stands no better than, than, than Scotland in this. In fact, if you, if you add on the, the various Westminster parties and all the rest of it, uh, substantially worse. I think one difficulty for the Scottish Government is this. Uh, I mean, they gave the impression, and were anxious to give the impression, that they were doing so much better than the politicians at Westminster. Yeah. And, of course, it can hardly still be argued in terms of communication uh, Nicholas Sturgeon was a superior communicator to Boris Johnson. The trouble is, as you've kind of lifted the behind the scenes and had a had a, a look at what was actually going on, th there's something off the Whitehall Westminster attitude towards the pandemic, pretty screaming out from these WhatsApps that have been revealed mm -hmm. in Scotland. The, the same attitude as uh, you know, we've got to delete everything in case people ever find out what we've been talking about. Right. Ho ho ho. And it really doesn't wash in a situation... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed about these things normally. Mm. But, you know, this is not the sort of situation where people should have been 
joking behind the scenes and having a good laugh at no. all the, the things and that also are going the serious, on. I mean, the it really doesn't, it doesn't sit well. No, and also the serious nature of it is also, surely, that if it was all being orchestrated by Jason Leach and it was almost official policy to get rid of anything that might be incriminating or it might be difficult to see in hindsight or might be dodgy, you know, that, in some people's eyes, would be called a conspiracy. And it could lead to some kind of law-breaking, could it not? I mean, I'm looking at a story here uh, from the papers today saying that the SNP is already now at the centre of three police investigations. That's right. I mean, you know, <laughs> if there's enough police investigations, I'm about to get them on something, I would hope. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, but no, so I mean, it's, it's sound like the Donald bad. Trump of uh, Scotland. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's right. Well, <laughs> unfortunately for the SNP, it's not having the same political effect. You know, every time <laughs> there's another indictment against Donald Trump, his poll ratings go up. That I'm afraid that's not happening for the SNP uh, in Scotland. But, you know, there's a, big, there's a serious side to this. And, you know, remember, of course, Nicola Sturgeon made an explicit commitment during a COVID briefing to the journalists on Channel 4 mm. that WhatsApps and these messages would be kept. And also, some of the stuff that's come out does indicate, of course, that some decisions were being made effectively by WhatsApp and informal communications. And, and you really need these messages to get a proper grasp of... Uh, of what was going on. Do you think this 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 is when Nicola called Boris a, an effing clown? <laughs> or was it another well, occasion? <laughs> I mean, I wonder whether that, that was uh, just one of the occasions when she called him that. I mean, there was a spoof tweet that went out earlier on today, I don't know if you saw it, uh, at which she was supposed to have been rather colourful about certain other people in the Cabinet. But, it, I mean, it's so believable that everyone fell for it. Turns out it wasn't actually her. Um, so we there's, some, there's some speculation, of course, in the missing messages. She may not have been too complimentary about people in her own cabinet. Well, <laughs> Which that would be, would be one that... reason for deletions. Well, I think it's fair to say, and, and, and you know, you've spoken about your friend, your previous friendship with Nicola Sturgeon and your, your kind of tutelage of her to some extent as a politician, that, you know, um, she, obviously got to, she obviously got to a point in her sort of power-crazed manner that she thought she could get away with saying anything she liked and doing anything she liked. Well, you know, Nicola once said she had an imposter syndrome. Uh, uh, you know, she suffered from it. She said that in an interview once, and there's no much sign of an imposter syndrome. <laughs> I think it's probably whatever the reverse of the imposter syndrome is. I mean, maybe during a huge health emergency like the pandemic, the likes of which you'd never seen before, perhaps, you know, that has a kind of psychological effect on people, uh, for better or for worse, yeah. and who knows. But, uh, but whatever the psychological, whatever the interpretation is, it is a very, very, very difficult situation to explain the mass deletions of messages after a solemn commitment to retain them and in the full knowledge that the inquiry was, ex or inquiries, I should say, were expecting to see them. Yes. That is very, very difficult to explain, not, not just to the bereaved relatives, that, that's very difficult to explain to the population as a whole. Absolutely right. Speaking of people who have got problems, uh, I'm just seeing a bit of breaking news here that uh, Baroness Moan uh, has had her assets frozen, uh, which doesn't sound very pleasant at all. Um, apparently, about £75 million worth of assets linked to Baroness Moan and her husband have been frozen or restrained by court order as they face a national crime agency investigation into alleged fraud uh, of those PPE contracts. So, um, not a good day for her either. No, but that's only a few hundred million to go, Mike. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, not that million, that's, a, that's a spit in the bucket. Yeah, absolutely right. We'll be talking more about that as the show goes on. Alex, let's hear your uh, your uh, Burns uh, impression because you've got something to say. I think you've got a few lines for Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak. And should we start with the SNP? Well, they, well, well I, what I thought for the SNP, it's uh, a little known uh, of... Uh, of uh, Burns's works. Uh, here's, a, here's a health, it's called. Uh, here's freedom to him that would read. Here's freedom to him that would write. Uh, there's name to be feared that the truth should be heard. Save them that the truth would indict. <laughs> yes. That's a message could by ex-colleagues could, could ruminate on yes. in the days and months ahead. And they know who they are, right? Yes, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're having a very miserable Burns night, unlike you. Um, do you want to give us a, a few lines on Sunak while you're at it, before we go? Well, I, I mean, for Sunak, I mean, you know, I, I thought for the, the two main protagonists at Westminster, I should do 
It's just a wee excerpt from To a Louse uh, for the Prime Minister and To a Mouse for Sir Keir Stammer. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to, a, to a Louse should be for the Prime Minister. Uh, oh, I'd some poor the gift to gear us to see ourselves as others see us. It would say many a blunder free us and foolish notion. I don't know if you need a translation of that, Mike, or, or can you just get the sentiment? I think to see ourselves as others see us has always been a great line. I shall, cho I shall toast you uh, one more time. Um, happy Burns and, Night. And, uh, how about Sir Keir? We can't, we can't go without Sir Oh, Keir. sorry, go on. We slick it, poor and timorous beastie, open a panics in thy breastie. That, he, that is certainly true. He doesn't know what to do. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Alex Salmon, former First Minister of Scotland. Um, in a pretty and, good place, and, I would and say. Listen, you've, put, you've turned down uh, the stricken Burns Club uh, for the 10th successive year of doing an immortal memory, Mike. Can I, can I put you... Can I go back to the Assembly next door and tell me you're a certainty for next year? I think you can. Absolutely right. I'll, I'll, I'll make it a date. No problem at all. And we want new jokes. Yeah, I'll bring new jokes, don't worry. I say that's all I do. Very good. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Alex Savender reporting in uh, from the north of Scotland. Burns Night, indeed. Uh